Hello and welcome. Well, for any expectant and mother to be, the lead up to the arrival of your newborn baby is such an incredibly exciting time. And during these nine months, the food that you eat fuels you and your baby. However, after you have given birth, your diet is just as important as it helps your body to recover and gives you the energy you need to care for you and your newborn. That said, we're here today to share postpartum and postnatal nutrition and self-care advice with our special guest, Christina Ross. Now, Christina is an accredited practicing dietitian, health coach, and a busy mum, and also founder of Cultivate Nutrition, where she provides online nutrition consultations and courses for new seasoned and soon-to-be mothers. Thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm well, thank you, Rachel. How are you? Yeah, I'm really excited for this chat, actually. Um, And of course, you know, in the lead up and after the arrival of a newborn, naturally the focus is on the health and well-being of the baby and with good reason. Um, However, postpartum care is really particularly important um, as it is, I guess, a a vulnerable point of time um, uh, for women and their babies. Um, I'd like to know initially, do you find that it is common that new mums tend to neglect their own health and well-being sort of post-birth? Have you found that in your experience? Yeah, I have found that in my practice. And I think it only comes naturally that that we sort of fall into that um, habit because our focus is all on the newborn, of course, and then any other children we might have um, in the family as well. So as mothers, we do tend to put ourselves further down that priority list. But um, my mission is really to empower mothers to... Um, take control of their health and understand that they're just as important as their children and give them practical strategies around their nutrition so that they can work that into their busy family life. Yes. And it's been said that you're continually surprised by the limited, if any, support um, or information provided to mothers during their immediate postpartum period and beyond um, related to their own nutrition. And the focus tends to quickly shift to the children and to, to the child once it arrives. I'd just love to know, like, you know, look, why do you think this is, is so? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, again, it's natural to put the focus onto the newborn because they are in this fragile uh, life stage. Um, yeah. And you know, as a a mother that's just given birth, you're still learning about your baby, even if it is your second, third, fourth child, you know, all all, um, pregnancies are different and all postpartum periods are different. Um, And so, yeah, the focus does, um, from a health professional perspective, tend to be on the baby and the baby's wellbeing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's a really interesting um, comparison when we look at a lot of traditional cultures where the focus is often on the mother and I think there's a lot that we can learn um, from those traditional practices around nurturing mothers in their postpartum period and can apply that in a more um, I guess you know medicalized western um, sort of environment so that all mothers can get that support that we know um, through previous generations and generations before that Um, has helped nurture new mothers back to their, you know, their their sense of well-being um, as a woman and mother. Tell us a little bit more about this. This is quite interesting. And what sort of cultures in particular can you maybe just quickly mention um, that have, have done this and done this well that we can learn from? Yeah, so um, there's actually a fabulous book, if I can recommend that, called um, The First 40 Days. And it talks about the the immediate postpartum period, so that sort of fourth trimester, um, I guess, of pregnancy, so that those 12 weeks after baby's been born. And looking at um, a lot of traditional cultures, so the traditional Chinese culture is one example where they practice, um, for example, um, confinement. So new mothers um, are encouraged Mm -hmm. within their culture to stay not Mm -hmm. only within the home, but also within the bed for um, a period of time. Um, And there's also certain traditional foods that are encouraged um, at this time to help with healing. They're often warming foods and grounding foods and they're very nutrient dense, but easy to digest. Mm -hmm. Um, So all considerations that are really putting the mother at the center and thinking about what her body needs to recover from this 
hugely transformative experience that um, she's just undergone. So, um, and similarly, there's, um, you know, similar cultural practices um, in traditional Indian cultures and South American cultures. And there do seem to be these common threads around rest and nourishing, warming foods and supporting the mother through, you know, massage and baths and things like that as well. That's wonderful. Um, mm. Well, here in our Western um, sort of cultures, um, we focus also uh, a lot on, um, I guess, the prenatal um, pre-birth. And I know this conversation today is mainly on um, sort of uh, after birth, um, et cetera. Mm. But I wanted to just ask you just briefly at the moment, on the market, there's a lot of prenatal supplements, both being synthetic and also some plant-based. Um, and a lot of these supplements can be taken um, sort of, um, as um, the, the couple are trying to conceive um, during during the pregnancy and, and post-birth. And I just wanted to ask mm. your opinion um, just broadly um, on what you think about these, these prenatal um, sort of uh, supplements. Yeah, absolutely. So ideally, um, it would be great to start the prenatal supplement sort of three months before conception. And I <laughs> understand that's not always... Um, the way things go, but um, mm. if you are actively planning a pregnancy, ideally three months out, starting these prenatal supplements, um, and like you said, continuing that throughout the pregnancy and also through the postpartum period. Um, but the type of supplement that you might need postpartum could be different depending on um, your nutritional status at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's best to speak with your dietitian or GP. But um, generally speaking, when you're looking at a prenatal supplement, you want to make sure. And that there's folate and iodine um, being two really key nutrients um, prenatally and also um, for postpartum. Um, and also iron is another key um, nutrient. Um, Omega-3 fats are also important and they're often not included in a lot of uh, prenatal supplements. So that's something to have a look at as well. Um, and perhaps a discussion to have with your GP or dietitian if you're not eating a lot of foods that are rich in omega-3 fats. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for that. Now, we published your article titled The Essentials of Postpartum Nutrition for All Mothers. Now, for someone who hasn't yet read the article, can you please tell us um, what it's about and what inspired you to write it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess starting with my inspiration for writing it um, has been my own clients that I work with um, mm -hmm. in my practice. Um, I have a lot of mothers coming to me, whether they're first time mums or seasoned mothers, um, just not feeling themselves. So they feel drained and burnt out and overwhelmed and fatigued. And so they're looking to their diet and they've come to that realization that they need to prioritize the food that they're eating. Um, and so they're looking for a bit of support. So I guess that's um, what inspired me to write this article in that I'm wanting to um, share this information with mothers that have just given birth so that they can feel good about taking the time to nourish their bodies with the food that they need. Um, because we know that, like I said before, we tend to put bubs first um, and that's understandable, but we also need to um, prioritize our own health and well-being so that we can, you know, do all those jobs that are involved with being a mother um, and not experience that fatigue and that depletion um, that can come with um, mothering and a newborn. <laughs> <laughs> so in your view, like why is um, postpartum nutrition so essential then for all mums? A couple of reasons why. Um, firstly, you know, you, your body has just grown another human being um, <laughs> and that's a very uh, energy intensive and nutrient intensive job for it to do. And so we want to make sure in that postpartum period that we're restoring some of those key nutrients that could have been at risk potentially um, during your pregnancy if, if you weren't eating certain foods. Um, secondly, it's important to help support that recovery process from the birth, whether you've had a vaginal birth or a cesarean birth, there is still, um, wound healing and repair that needs to happen. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure that, um, in that postpartum period, mothers are eating those foods that are going to give them those nutrients to support that wound healing and repair. Mm -hmm. Um, and then thirdly, I guess to get that sort of energy boost um, that we need to, in an effort to sort of balance the sleep deprivation that comes in that newborn period. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's certain foods that can give us sustained energy versus mm -hmm. other foods that will give us a sharp 
spike and fall in energy. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we want to make clever choices around that so that we can feel as energized as possible. Yes. And and as you just mentioned, of course, the process of growing and birthing new life takes a lot of energy and is really like nutrient demanding, as you just mentioned. Absolutely. Um, And there is a greater demand on energy and nutrient demands coupled with the fatigue, depletion, of course, sleep deprivation mothers commonly experience. Um, Mm. So I'd love to know from your perspective, what are the key nutrients um, a woman really needs to replenish her body with post-birth? Absolutely. Um, So iron is a key one. Mm -hmm. Um, If you think about the blood loss that happens during birth, um, iron is also a key nutrient that's used by the body in pregnancy. Um, And there's a a growing body of research that's demonstrating an association between a woman's iron intake and her risk of postpartum depression. So we know that iron, yeah, um, we know that iron's a key, um, a key nutrient. And Mm -hmm. just speaking generally about women of childbearing age, whether they've been pregnant or not, most women tend not to meet their iron targets. And so it's an important nutrient to focus on whether you're looking at animal-based sources um, or plant-based sources to get the iron that you need. Mm -hmm. Um, Other key nutrients would be zinc and vitamin C. Um, They both play a role in wound healing um, and help in the formation of collagen, which is the connective structural tissue um, of our muscles. So that helps with that repair post-birth. Mm-hmm. Um, and then omega-3 fats, which I mentioned were important prenatally, equally as important postnatally. Yeah. Um, and again, there is some research that's demonstrating omega-3 fats might play a role in um, minimizing the risk of postpartum depression as well. Wonderful. I just wanted to touch on this subject. Um, what about if, if a mother is a vegetarian or vegan in that instance, mm. especially um, with omega-3s and, and, and iron in particular? Great question. Um, So there are plant-based sources of iron and omega-3 fats. Mm -hmm. Um, In the case of omega-3 fats, it's not, the plant-based version is not um, a classic omega-3 fat. It's um, a precursor to it. So it's called alpha linoleic acid. And when we eat the ALA from plant foods, our body converts that into a version of omega-3 fats. Okay. However, that rate of conversion um, is not super efficient. So it's about 15%. Um, So you get your ALAs from things like nuts and seeds, like linseeds, flax seeds. Um, But it might be the case that because of that um, poor conversion, you still might not be getting enough. And so I do encourage mothers, particularly if they are vegan, Mm-hmm. Um, or vegetarian to speak mm-hmm. to their dietitian or GP to get some advice um, on potentially the role of supplements um, in those cases to help give them a bit of a boost. Okay. Um, and there are um, plant-based sources of omega-3 supplements um, based on algae and things like that. So they are suitable for vegans. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to iron, there are plant-based sources um, of iron as well, predominantly your whole grains, legumes, beans, pulses, um, foods like that. Um, but again, our absorption is not as great as from animal foods, um, but there are some clever things you can do to increase your absorption, um, like pairing those foods with foods that are rich in vitamin C, um, which is also one of those key nutrients for postpartum, but also vitamin C helps our bodies absorb iron better. So um, yeah, there's some things that you can do there to help boost your absorption if you're not eating the animal sources. Wonderful. And in general, how long does it actually take a woman's body then to fully recover from pregnancy? How long is that period? That's a good question. Yeah. And it, I guess it does depend on the type of birth that um, the woman has had and any Mm. other um, medical um, risk factors that might be at play. But um, general consensus would be that those sort of first 12 weeks um, are important. So, you know, women will have that six week checkup. Um, And that will check their sort of birth recovery. But in terms of replenishing key nutrients, um, I like to allow a longer window of time. Um, So 12 weeks? Yeah, another 12 weeks. So then how does a postpartum like nutrition plan differ um, from the days following the birth to, well, in in the research I was doing earlier on, it did say six to eight weeks um, following the birth. But as you've mentioned, you like to extend it further than Mm. the six to eight weeks to the 12 weeks. Mm. So how Mm. would a nutrition plan differ and or would it not differ? Would you sort of have the same nutrition plan throughout that whole period? 
Um, it tends to vary. Um, so um, if I was seeing a woman in that first sort of six to eight weeks, the, the variation often comes in what her lifestyle and routine is like. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very common, I find for women, um, they're at home a little bit more um, during those earlier weeks. And mm -hmm. some women purposely want to do that. Others, that's just how the day unfolds. Um, but then as they sort of get towards the end of that, you know, fourth trimester, mm -hmm. um, a lot of women comment that this sort of fog tends to lift and they, they start to feel a bit more like themselves. And they're what period to did you say? That fourth trimester. Oh, sorry. In the second sort of six week block of that yep. 12 weeks. Um, and so they might be venturing out a little bit more. Um, maybe they're eating out a bit more, um, you know, catching up for coffee dates and mother's groups and things like that. So the nutrition plan will change more in respect to their lifestyle and what uh -huh. they're wanting to do in their days, um, more so than their, their um, nutrient requirements changing all that drastically in as that, well. Um, 12 weeks. Yeah. yeah. And you know, irrespective if a mother has had a natural or cesarean birth, um, all mothers definitely can benefit from foods that um, support their wound healing um, and recovery post-birth, as you mentioned earlier on as well. So could you, and you briefly mentioned it, mentioned it could you just maybe expand just um, briefly on what nutrients and minerals support recovery and wound healing as well? Absolutely. Um, so zinc is a key nutrient, mm -hmm. um, a, a key mineral um, that supports wound healing. It also plays a role in our immune system, which is important. Um, and it forms, um, it, it does form a structural component of some hormones um, like insulin, which helps regulate our blood sugar levels and our, our energy levels. Um, yeah. And so when we're looking at recovery post-birth, zinc is a key nutrient to include in your diet. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the key sources are seafood, particularly shellfish. So again, it can be a tricky um, nutrient to hit your target if you are um, vegetarian or vegan. Yeah. Um, but again, speaking to um, your dietitian is, is really important from that perspective. Um, but also zinc is found in whole grains, um, in our legumes and certain fruits and veggies as well. Mm -hmm. um, the other key nutrient is vitamin C. Um, so we classically think of oranges um, when we think about vitamin C, but it is really quite plentiful in all fruits and veggies. Um, so as long as you're including those foods in your diet in as much abundance as you can, as many colors as you can, um, then you'll be getting enough vitamin C to help with that. Oh, wonderful. And do you have any other practical ways to make nourishing um, ourselves and eating well easier during the postpartum period and just right throughout motherhood? Yeah, absolutely. So one of my favorite strategies is to keep a well-stocked pantry. Mm -hmm. I think this is so useful because in that postpartum period, you might not be wanting to venture out of the house. Um, so if you can throw together meals from the ingredients that you've got in your pantry, um, then it just helps alleviate some of that stress that can come with, you know, coming up with ingredients to cook meals with. So mm -hmm. things like canned legumes, and I mentioned legumes as being sources of lots of those key nutrients. So yeah. canned chickpeas or kidney beans, black beans, any kind of beans. Um, they're shelf stable, they're relatively inexpensive, and they're a great source of protein and also iron and zinc and those nutrients we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, canned fish as well mm -hmm. so tuna or salmon for some of those healthy omega-3 fats um, canned tomatoes or um, passata makes a great base for lots of dishes so keeping that in your pantry mm -hmm. frozen veggies frozen uh, berries I know that's not a pantry staple but it's a freezer staple <laughs> um, so again just keeping that um, pantry and freezer well stocked so that you can throw together meals from the ingredients you've got on hand, mm -hmm. um, I think is a really useful strategy, not only just in postpartum, but throughout motherhood as well. Yeah. Um, other staples like um, sort of your dry goods, so thinking about rice and pasta, quinoa, any other grains that you typically cook with, um, eggs and long life milk, whether it's animal or plant-based, um, I think would be key staples to have on hand. Um, the other strategy I really like um, is this idea of a meal train. So, um, and I'm hearing a lot more women doing this um, through their late pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when people are asking them, well, what can I get you? What do you need for baby? Um, mm -hmm. Instead of um, gifts for baby, they're asking for this meal train idea so that 
um, okay. friends and family allocate one night um, once the baby's arrived um, and they offer to bring dinner over for oh, wonderful. the family. So the mum doesn't have to cook, yeah. So whether it's a frozen home-cooked meal that you can just keep in the freezer for when you need it or whether it's, you know, a dish that's ready to go, I just think that's such a, a beautiful idea um, for new mums. I know yes. I would have loved that as a, a new mum myself. Um, and, yeah, as an extension of that, another idea is to keep your pantry, uh, sorry, your freezer well-stocked with mm -hmm. um, home-cooked meals. And so this is something that you can also plan for during your pregnancy. Yes, um, absolutely. Throughout motherhood as well, you know, if you're making a bolognese sauce, make double. It yes. doesn't take that much extra effort and then you can freeze that extra portion, keep it in the freezer, and then you've always got it there for, you know, those nights where you're too tired or you can't think of what else to cook. It mm -hmm. just... Um, I find that it helps alleviate that mental load that comes with the what's for dinner conversation. Absolutely. Um, and I'd love yeah. for you, can you maybe share some simple um, meal or maybe snack ideas even um, that provide to the, some of the key nutrients um, that you've just um, mentioned. And also I think you've highlighted them in, in the blog also in the article. Mm. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a huge fan of one handed snacks because um, often the other hand is holding baby yes, or nursing yes. baby or <laughs> trying to get baby to sleep. Um, so mm -hmm. a couple of ideas. Edamame beans are great. You can buy them frozen. From oh, the love them. Yes. Great I idea. Know. So you get in some greens, you get in some legumes, you get in some protein. They tick a lot of boxes in those little, little bean pods. Um, secondly would be things like veggie sticks for your vitamin C and you can dunk that into some Greek yogurt or some hummus. Yeah. Um, natural popcorn is also a really great option. Um, if you've had some time to make like a veggie slice, so just grate up a whole heap of veggies with some egg and maybe a bit of cheese, bake that. Um, and then you can portion that into individual pieces and freeze that. Um, even just a simple hard boiled egg, um, ticks off a lot of those key nutrients that we talked about. Um, making a smoothie, whether it's a green smoothie, a banana smoothie, a berry smoothie, um, you can sort of whip that up fairly quickly and then drink that on the go if you need to as well. As well. Yeah. And, and sleep deprivation, as you mentioned earlier, um, can really take its toll, leaving mm. mum's um, minds foggy, as you mentioned, and fatigued during mm. the day. Plus it can also have, um, you know, you reaching out for sweets to help make up for that lack of energy. Um, I'd mm. love for you to share some strategies that you think may help provide sustained um, energy boost, but in particular for your brain, is there anything else um, that maybe can, can help a, a mum and, and mm. yeah, with that at all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, the two key nutrients that keep us feeling full or satisfied for longer are protein and fibre. Yes. So I encourage my mums to include protein and or fibre um, in all their meals or snacks so that they are getting that prolonged feeling of fullness. Yes. Um, yep. Because often that hunger is then what kind of triggers the or shaky hands or feeling grumpy or hangry or tired. And um, it just sort of exacerbates that sleep deprivation that's already kind of there um, when you're up through the night feeding a newborn. Uh, you've mentioned earlier on and also in your article that's been um, there's been an association between poorer quality diets and an increased risk of postnatal depressive symptoms. I'd love to know what do new mums need to incorporate into their diet to help prevent this then? Mm, that's a great question. Um, and the research does show an association. So it's not a direct cause and effect. Um, so when they're looking at identifying, you know, better quality diets versus poorer quality diets, there are some key traits that are common. Mm -hmm. So better quality diets tend to have more fruit and veggies um, in particular. Um, they also tend to have more heart healthy fats. So looking at your omega-3 fats, but also fats from like olive oil, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to more sort of saturated or trans fats, which would be in a poorer quality diet. Mm -hmm. um, and they tend to have fewer processed foods. So less, um, fewer foods that are higher in fat, sugar, or salt. So mm -hmm. they're sort of the general kind of traits of a, um, a better quality diet from a health mm -hmm. perspective. Um, yeah, so including lots of fresh fruit and veggies, lots of colour um, would be sort of a starting point there and some good healthy fats as well. This has been a great chat. Now, if you were to summarise, I guess, your key messages for anyone watching and listening, what would they be? My key message is for all mothers, whether it's 
you know, a new mom or a seasoned mother um, to really feel okay and to feel good about taking time to prioritize their health and their nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find a lot of guilt um, in a lot of my clients when they first come to see me about taking this time to prioritize their health. Um, but they very quickly realize how impactful it can be and how effective it can be in improving how they feel um, just by taking a little bit of time to get their nutrition right um, and with some practical strategies that can work in easily with their lifestyle. So I'd really love for all mothers, once they have a baby, to see a dietitian um, or any healthcare professional that they feel will, will help improve their health so that they can feel their best. And in saying that, like where, where would, um, I guess, say for a mother that, that is expecting at the moment, where would, where would you like, suggest that she starts? What's a really good starting point? Um, so a mother who's expecting, yeah. yeah. So um, I think just also thinking about um, some of those strategies I mentioned before about getting a little bit organised in the kitchen for when baby arrives. Mm -hmm. So making sure she's got some pantry staples there that she can throw together some quick meals or um, freezing some meals so that they're there in the freezer. Um, I do have a free download on my website that is Fantastic. useful. Um, it's just a, um, a whole foods pantry checklist. Um, and I've filmed a little video just going through my own pantry, um, just as an example. So um, it's a checklist of all those pantry staples um, that you can whip up quick meals from. So maybe going through that um, to, to get organised in that sense. Um, Wonderful. And we'll make sure we include that link and the link um, to your article in the show notes. Christina, thank you so much for your time today. If anyone's got any other questions, whereabouts can they find you? Um, they're more than welcome to reach out on um, Instagram. So my handle is at underscore cultivate nutrition or one word underscore, um, or they can search me on Facebook as well. Um, I do also have a private Facebook page for mums and women looking to conceive. So um, if that's something that you're interested in, you're more than welcome to join in there as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. And I really look forward to having another chat in the not too distant future. Take care and that stay safe. Wonderful. Thank you so See much, later. Rachel. Take See care. You. Bye. Bye.